Hey everyone, um, my name is James Lemon. Uh, I'm the global lead for all things travel and leisure at Stripe. Uh, my passion is hotels and hospitality and I'm delighted to be, it's my first Hedna. I can't quite believe that given how many of you I've met over the years um, and it's Stripe's first Hedna. So it's your first Hedna chats. Let's see how the next 15 minutes goes. But there's a lot to cover. I think what we're trying to do really is firstly just inspire, share a little bit about the digital transformations that are happening in guest journeys behind the scenes in the world's travel enterprises, but also, also in other industries. And then also wanted to kind of maybe educate a little bit that actually you know, payment strategies are not scary. So just wanted to walk through the building blocks of payment strategies that we see in our partners. And hopefully that will leave you with you know, a roadmap, a guidebook of where you guys could go next in, in your hotel chains, in your OTAs, in your, in your tech businesses. So, a quick look at what Hedden has done in the fintech space over the last um, few sessions. It feels like there's a, a big focus on seamless journeys. How do we make guest journeys digital? How do we go to where they are and they want to search and book? And then how do we make sure that they have phenomenal uh, on-property experiences as well? How do we offer globally consistent experiences? Right? Our loyalty members show up again and again in different countries and different properties. How do we make sure that our brand is represented the same way? And then no surprise, how do we maximize monetization? Are we leaving money on the table with the approach we've got today around room bookings and credit cards and missing opportunities for more total revenue management? My background and why I'm here, so I joined Stripe about a year ago. Previous to that, I had you know, 15 years or so in the industry. Five years of that was at um, IHG and strategy teams. Four years was at Travelport, helping run their kind of hotel and car business. And then four or five years in, in startup land um, in a short-term rental organization that helped create what is now Marriott Homes and Villas. Um, and also ran my own industry mentoring platform as well. So really excited about everything uh, Hedna's doing in, in that space. The reason I joined Stripe, which many of you may have not heard of and, and was really new to me a year ago, was that I saw a company that was working with not only most of the leading brands in travel that I really admired, but they were building technologies in other industries that I thought were absolutely perfect for what we've been trying to work on in the last 10 years or so in, in hospitality. But a whistle-stop tour of who is Stripe. So Stripe processed nearly a trillion dollars of kind of internet bookings around the world every year across about two million customers. Now, why does that matter? It's because Stripe is a learning machine. And every time we see a credit card or any time we witness fraud, we learn from that and we adjust the way we think. So by the time you see a customer, we'll know if we've seen them before anywhere in the Stripe network, we'll know how they behave, how they like to book, and we're able to whittle out um, people you don't want in your, in your hotels and, uh, and avoid fraud. We started off mostly working with startups and, and have a phenomenal range of kind of tech startups in travel that we, we've learned with. But now our focus is global household names. So companies like DoorDash and Lyft and Uber all grew up on Stripe. And now we're working with obviously the likes of Amazon and Tesla. Whenever you're doing your internet shopping, chances are you've experienced a Stripe checkout. And if that's gone well, fantastic. We'll share a little bit more about how that can work in travel. I'm not going to spend a load of time on traveler trends because you've heard these a few times over the last couple of days. But I just want to point out three really interesting fintech moments in traveler trends. The first is flexibility that we talked a little bit about this morning. So we work with partners like Hopper, who I know are vastly present here, around their fintech products. You're still selling non-refundable rates in your hotels. Adding on an insurance product where just for a couple of bucks, you can give that guest flexibility to change whenever they want, cancel for any reason, or just walk out if the room's not right for them, Ult offers your guests the ultimate flexibility and gives you a chance to monetize another moment of the guest journey. Multi-purpose trip. So we're working with companies like Hertz, rebuilding their entire financial infrastructure and their guest journey. Well, they're seeing this trend of people might book a car for a week, but they can only expense four or five days of it. So how can they do split billing so that people can pay on their personal card as well as their credit card? And we're using the same tech that we build with restaurant chains to split your bill at the end of your meal to help Hertz do that in their online journeys. And then recognition. Personalization is uh, uh, something I know we're all really keen on. Are we remembering all of the buying moments that our customers have with us and are we able to make sure we convert next time? But also, what's the opportunity for subscriptions in travel? We buy our coffee and our media through subscription, and we're starting to see some really interesting fintech innovation to grow share of wallet and offer an Amazon Prime-like experience for travel. 
So we talk a lot about how payments touches the customer journey. We talked a bit about frictionless check-in yesterday, and if you were to combine an online identity check with an online credit card wallet, you have the start of, a, of an invisible check-in. If you remember your customer's credit card details in their profile, they should be able to order room service at the click of a button without, without getting their credit card out of their pockets. But payments touch every moment of your operations. So your owners and your teams are also need to be part of this vision you have of how to make life easier. So we see a huge amount of partnerships in the industry. I know last week, kind of Groups 360 and Marriott announced their, their new marriage. And that's exactly the way that partnerships need to work. How do you give guests the best possible experience in that online buying moment, but hiding the complexity behind the scenes of where that money's going? And this is taken from Hedner's own research. We know that the leave it alone, I don't want to touch payments approach isn't working. And I think that's still the approach of a few hotel chains. But I'm here to tell you that it ruins guest journeys. And in three years' time, I don't think we want to be the kind of companies that are still just blindly taking credit card details, dropping them into the hotel PMS, and dusting our hands of it. It's costly to work like that. It opens up to us up to all kinds of fraud. But most importantly, I think we're really ruining the guest experience. You know, we're missing that moment when they want to check out to say, we know you, and we know how you want to check out, and we know how you behave, and we know how you want to experience this trip. So trust us to give you a centralized experience that works right across our hotel ecosystem. And I think that if hotel chains don't embrace it, we're going to lose ground to the OTAs, who are more e-commerce native and, and are definitely adapting faster. So I do think we need to have a, a payment strategy, or at least a plan. And even if you want to do nothing, make that your plan and make it a conscious effort. <laughs> Why have a payment strategy? I think it comes down to three things. I think it comes down to customer experience, enabling them to purchase the way they want and strengthen your direct channels. I think it comes down to operational efficiencies. You know, imagine if you could eliminate invoicing. Imagine if you could eliminate reconciliations and disagreements about how many guests stayed and how much they spent and commissions that were owed. And it's about new revenues. We've had a tough couple of years, and we've seen some real innovators move fast on things like staying in hotels for the day or upselling before you arrive or a partnership where you um, assure, tr assure transfers from the airport. The world is limitless, and customers are offering a chance to personalize these trips and you to monetize each step of the way. So a couple of examples from um, Stripe users that we've grown up with. So if you've ever got into a Lyft or an Uber and you admire that just walk in, just get out experience, that's Stripe. And from the moment you start your customer journey of verifying who you are, loading up your preferred payment types, that's your gateway to this ubiquitous experience that is the same whatever city you show up in the world. We transfer that information at the moment you book to the platform account of Lyft or Uber. And then Lyft and Uber are in charge of moving that money behind the scenes on Stripe rails to an individual taxi driver or an individual restaurant. Or if I come to Seattle, I can open up my Lyft app and I can get on a Lime bike. Lyft take care of that payment to Lime and that revenue share behind the scenes without a touch of a button on Stripe rails. So it's replacing this idea of manual reconciliation, sending of invoices, digging out your trank details and sending them over with automatic tech rails that run behind the scenes. And I think it unlocks huge potential to onboard partners faster. You know, if a Lyft driver can manage to create a Stripe account and join this ecosystem, hotels can definitely do it. If you want partnerships with taxi firms, with food delivery companies, you've got a real opportunity to, to, to create a super app where people aren't just booking hotel rooms, but they're curating the rest of their trip. And you've got moments to monetize. You know, focus your time on the depth of that strategic partnership and let the revenue share take care of itself behind the scenes and don't constantly argue over who owes, over who owes what. We do exactly the same with companies like DoorDash. DoorDash, again, built up on Stripe. And I think that's a really relevant example for the hotel industry because DoorDash don't want to be merchant of record, right? They want the millions of grocery stores in America, all of those local merchants, to stay merchant of record. So what they do is you create your profile. You may have a subscription each month. You may just be making a one-off purchase. You go ahead, that money goes into the DoorDash account, but straight away it moves down to the grocery. So you know exactly how much you've spent, when, you when the dash is turning up, and exactly what items you need. 
the, the restaurant stays merged to record, but in the middle, DoorDash sit there and they can still control that customer experience. They can still offer alternative payment methods like Google Pay and Apple Pay. They can experiment with things like Klarna. And they can make sure that the customer sees exactly the same experience, whether they're ordering from a, a shop in New York or a restaurant in San Francisco. It creates a huge amount of stickiness with these subscriptions. You create frictionless experiences with one click where the payment's invisible. And I think a restaurant train is another great example where you know, lo a lot like hotels, how have their last couple of years been? Well, they've had to cope with the rise of third-party channels like Deliveroo and Glovo in, in Europe with, with, um, with, with people like Instacart in, in the US. And they've had to deal with a huge range of integrations behind the scenes, legacy tech stacks merging with things like, things like Lightspeed. They also often work in franchise environments as well. So we're able to work with fast food chains who may want to take orders at the drive through or through an app, maybe still over the phone, maybe through a third party, uh, a third party channel. All of that money then ends up at the right restaurant with fees split behind the scenes. And you know exactly like, how to do the revenue share, how much you're owed, and you start to build up that view centrally around customer loyalty. So it's a really exciting marketplace tech that I think is, is, a, is, a real, is a real game changer. And the final point I'll make on that is this isn't a vision. This stuff is here now. You could literally go back to work at the end of this week and start these projects next week. You could be live in minutes and hours. All that's getting in the way is business decisions. The conversations we're having here about technology aren't futuristic, they're, they're here now. So some top tips for a, for a payment strategy. I think firstly, really understand what you're trying to achieve. Is this about new revenues? Is it about reducing that friction for your owner community? Is it about reducing the hours your team spend on manual tasks so they can get back to true hospitality or, or value adding decisions? Put a team around it. We certainly recommend that this is cross-functional between commercial, between finance, and between, and between um, technology. And, include, and then think about risk. So some of the hotel chains we're working with, they're like, look, we really don't want to touch any of this. And so you should be able to work with a partner that can take all of your risk. But you may decide as a chain, actually, you know what? We will guarantee our hotels can fulfill this stay, and that will speed up the relationship that you're, you know, you're, each of your hotels have in, in terms of the, the platform. Lots more to talk about on that. Other considerations is what local pay payment methods or alternative payment methods do you want? You know, we've got some really exciting chains and OTAs that are starting to experiment with the likes of buy now, pay later. Is that right for you or do you want to take a wait and see approach? It almost seems like a no-brainer that you'd switch on Google Pay and Apple Pay, particularly for the leisure transient market. What are your key inbound markets? You know, are you looking for that China inbound we were talking about this morning? Does your partner allow you at the flick of a switch to turn on local payment methods? Do they tailor it to where that guest is booking rather than where the hotel's based? Next up is well, what geos should you focus on? Do you, you know, is it an 80-20 rule? You just really want to get this right in the US and North America. Is it really important to you that you target markets where you know, you know that credit card penetration is low and you know your book direct and kind of owner proposition is under threat? You know, Germany, Netherlands, some of these EU markets where compliance and, and rules are changing much faster. And are you working with a partner that's got a really clear roadmap on where compliance sits? The key thing here is working at hotel chains in the past, the GDSs in the past, I know how roadmaps get disrupted when someone realizes there's a change to the payment rules coming. Wouldn't it be great if all of that stuff was someone else's problem? So you can focus on things that drive guest experience. And then how do you want your guests to pay? Do you want them to prepay? But my personal take on is we're going to see a lot more prepay in hospitality. You know, it, we're learning from short stay rentals. We're learning from service departments. These are really pre -stay heavy, um, prepay businesses. And as we said earlier, you know, attractions, transfers, airlines, they're often prepay. I think it's a really interesting proposition that I don't think customers are scared of. So is that a mobile or a web play? Or do you want to wait till they, they get in store? And then what's your kind of terminal strategy? Does your front desk tie up to your bar, tie up to your spa? Um, tie up to you know, drinks at the pool. So how does Stripe fit into all of this in travel? Well, as I say, travel is an industry that we obsess about. It's one of our top three industries globally. And we genuinely think the learnings we've got from other industries and the progress we're making with key hotel chains and, and players in the space means we can really unlock this vision for a global financial infrastructure and, uh, that the industry can sit on. 
That will unlock frictionless travel experiences. It will unlock deep ecosystems and partnerships and franchise networks. But most importantly, it will keep payments completely invisible and behind the scenes, allowing us to get on with what we want, which is providing amazing hospitality and amazing guest experiences. We work with a load of partners already, and thank you to all of our partners in the room. You know, we're learning a lot from the, the retailers and the OTAs that are really pushing the boundaries of, of e-commerce in the space. But it's lovely to see most of the top 10 chains already getting on board that you know, this financial infrastructure works perfectly for franchise networks. Why are we still sending invoices? Why don't we do things through tech? It's the core of the digital transformation of most of the big hotel chains right now. And where you don't see Stripe, but we're continually learning and, uh, from our partners, is behind the scenes. So working with the likes of SiteMinder and CloudBeds, helping them offer killer payment offerings to their chains, to their long tail of partners. You'll see us in restaurants, you'll see us in bars, you'll see us right through the guest journey with people like Group360 and, and Certify as well. A couple of final examples to finish with. I think you know, Marriott should be really proud of the work they're doing to finally embrace the F&B offering they want. You know, a globally consistent F&B offering at the bar, in the room, at leisure destinations for all of their hotel chains, all managed behind the scenes through a Stripe infrastructure. So the guest gets the same purchasing experience in every, in every venue. I will continue to bang on about subscriptions because I think there's such a huge opportunity in travel. And Accor, out in APAC, have launched Accor Plus on Stripe. Their first go at saying, you know, there's going to be an annual program with benefits to loyalty members. We've seen British Airways launch a subscription for points. What are you going to do in this space to capture that great share of wallet to build your own Amazon Prime? And many of you know Trip Actions. We work with Trip Actions, Travel Perks, many others to create their corporate issuing cards. You know, consistent um, experiences for their corporate travelers in 20 countries, all the data connecting behind the scenes to give their corporates a you know, much higher view of compliance and policy and all the fun corporate travel stuff. And then the, the last point I'll make is really have a look at how fast your partner's moving. So we're really proud at Stripe. We've got 3,500 people just working in engineering. That means every day, the products we're talking about today, from our connect marketplaces to online payments, it's, it's getting better every single moment of every single day. And we are phenomenally proud of what we'll be able to do right across the travel ecosystem. So hopefully there's been some education there and some, some thought-provoking ideas. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks to all our partners, and enjoy the rest of the conference. And I'll see you in the discussion groups in about an hour. Thank you.